Coming up on this week's news, the Blackpool Hotel, where a 10-year-old boy was electrocuted, stays closed this week as a probe into the accident gets underway. Electricians strike in a dispute that could shut down the nation's nuclear stations, and figures reveal that the UK is an astonishing 12 years behind its EV charger target. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with the Electric Heating Company. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news, so you don't have to. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. The Blackpool Hotel, where a 10-year-old boy was electrocuted, remains closed this week as an investigation into the accident gets underway. Tiffany's, known locally as the Pink Hotel, shut its doors on the promenade after the youngster, who was named last week as Jack Piper Shiak, received a fatal electrical shock. Like many tourists, the family was in town for the first week of the famous illuminations. Jack was found unresponsive at about 11 o'clock at night in the lounge area of the building. Lancashire Police said that his injuries were consistent with him having received a high voltage of electricity. In a statement, Tiffany says that it is continuing to provide the relevant authorities with any assistance they need to carry out their investigations. A file is being prepared for the coroner. Such absolutely tragic news. The team here at eFix would like to send their sincerest condolences to Jack's family and friends. Our hearts go out to you all. In other news, electricians at Altrad Babcock in the West Midlands are to walk out in a dispute over their pay. The row has the potential to shut down some of the UK's most critical facilities. That's because the workers test and certify tools for use in nuclear power stations. The Unite Union describes the latest pay offer from the employer as dismal. It says that the safety critical role is not valued by Altrad Babcock, with some members earning just £13.62 per hour. A series of planned strikes are due to begin this week. The union urged the company to come back to the negotiating table with a better pay offer. Looking to the brighter side of the industry, this weekend it's Screwfix Live, taking place at Farnborough International Exhibition and Conference Centre. And the Lucico Group are exhibiting across all three days from Friday to Sunday. On Friday the 22nd, we at eFix will be joining them on their stand, so if you'd like to come down and meet the team, then please head over. Gary usually likes to shower gifts on people like their confetti at these events, so make sure you get there early before he runs out. You'll also have the chance to meet our new presenter, Joe Hammond, as he's our third Joe to join the team. Last week, we asked you to suggest a suitable nickname to help us avoid confusion. And you delivered. From the prosaic Joe 3 to the mathematical Joe Cubed to the electrical three phase Joe, GI Joe, Joe C, Tri Joe, Cotton Eye Joe. My personal favourite was a Simpsons reference, Joey Jojo Jr. Shabadoo, as that's how my bro heem answers the phone whenever I call him. And there were many more. However, the one that we all liked here at eFix, including the man himself, was Joe 3PO, as he is indeed a Star Wars fan. So get yourself down to Screwfix Live on the 22nd of September. Find us on the Lucy co group stand check out their great product offering and have a catch up and a chin wag with gary rick og joe joe 2.0 and joe 3po now figures out this week reveal that the uk is an astonishing 12 years behind its ev charger target the goal set out by the government in 2022 is to install 300,000 charge points by 2030 but as of July this year, only 44,000 have been installed. If it continues at the same pace, the nation is set to be over a decade late. The renewable specialist Make My House Green is now calling on the government to work with DNOs to ensure they have the capacity needed to supply EV chargers with power. For its part, the government says that it has allocated unprecedented funds for EV charging. This week, it's giving some £40 million to 13 local authorities in the West Midlands. The move should lead to 17,500 new new public charging points by the end of 2025. Areas covered include Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, Staffordshire, Lincolnshire and Leicestershire. Proving that effective EV infrastructure isn't the utopian dream of a surrealist artiste, the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham has just shown what can be achieved when funding and grid capacity is available. It has just opened the UK's largest electric vehicle charging hub. The site can charge up to 180 vehicles at a time in as little as 15 minutes. The multi-million pound site offers motorists 150 7 kilowatt AC charging bays and a further 30 super fast 300 kilowatt DC charging bays. Dubbed the Gigahub, it was developed by EV Network and BP Pulse, which operates the site. 
Not to be outdone, Leeds City Council has just unveiled the UK's first solar-powered park and ride site. The site in Stourton is serviced by electric buses that link it to Leeds City Centre. At peak sunshine, the photovoltaic panels can deliver 1.2 megawatts of power. This is used for the depot's lighting, CCTV and electric heating in the waiting room. A 950 kilowatt hour battery allows the solar panels to power the site outside of daylight hours. Around 12% of the energy produced by the site will be exported to the grid. In product news this week, Ledvance has announced that it's to offer its professional range of LED lamps under its own name. The company was formerly part of Osram, but in the last seven years has established itself as a leading independent brand in LED lighting. It will offer the light sources in three classes, superior, performance and the budget conscious value range. Although the names are new, they are linked to previous products, making them easy to find in the online product catalogue. The company's commitment to sustainability was recognised recently with the award of a silver medal from EcoVal one of the world's top rating agencies. Martindale has unveiled four new proving units for checking voltage meters are accurate. The products instantly supply the test voltage for both high and low impedance voltage indicators, test lamps and meters. They have both AC and DC outputs selectable by a push button switch and stepped voltage output matched to two pole tester thresholds with three maximum output voltages across the range, 230 volts, 440 volts and 690 volts. Skolmore has added an RCD double socket to its popular mode range. This unit has a built-in residual current device designed to trip if it detects a fault current. The company says that the plastic used in the device has special antimicrobial properties, which means it will kill any bacteria that comes into contact with it, such as MRSA, E. coli, Salmonella, and other similar little ragamuffins. This makes the socket especially suitable for healthcare applications, such as care homes, hospitals, and doctor's surgeries. And finally, the widow of a former electrician has appealed to eFix viewers for information following his death from contact with asbestos. Reg Woodley of Welling Garden City died from mesothelioma, a cancer of the lining of the lung caused by exposure to the building material. Reg's wife Joyce is appealing to any former workmates for information. Following Reg's diagnosis, he instructed lawyers to investigate if his illness was linked to his work history, but the 77-year-old sadly passed away before the case was concluded. Joyce and her family are now asking that anyone who worked with Reg while he was a maintenance electrician at Rank Xerox to come forward. Reg worked at the company in Bessemer Road, Welling Garden City from 1969 until 1984. He recalled removing false ceilings at the site as well as lagging in the boiler room, both of which may have contained asbestos. If you can help, I'll pop the contact details in the show notes. Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show, where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, they're the people who've created the Swiss Army knife of solar inverters, along with all weather batteries, very much the Boy Scouts of the solar industry, it's Sunsync. Up next, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team, it's Ludum Palazzoli. And for the ultimate experience in wireless sound and home cinema, with their most powerful portable speaker yet, it's the home of the Rome, Sonos. The best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, it's Doncaster Cables, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality cables. And to fix all that gear together and to surfaces, you need fasteners that would win a gold medal. It's Olympic fixings. And finally, celebrating their 100th anniversary of of literally creating connections in the electrical industry this year, rising from the flames like some kind of mythological avian, it's Phoenix Contact. Big thanks to you all. We really appreciate your ongoing support for the news. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were chihuahua and diarrhea. Never sure how reflective of our scriptwriter's week these words are, but they sound like he had an interesting one that week. Anyway, the first person to get both right was Simon Williams, 7154. And bonus points for getting the spelling spot on as well. Top work there, Simon. Click the link in the description to claim your prize. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with The Electric Heating Company. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm.